Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Windsor and Newton watercolor class. My name is Jeannie Breedy, and I'll be moderating, moderating today and uh, taking all your questions. And um, let's have an active chat. Um, tell me where you're call calling from. We love that you're participating at the end. We hope that you'll be able to share your art with us. Today, Shalene, Shailene is going to be doing um, daffodils with uh, a desaturated color palette. So we're just going to jump right in. So enjoy. All right. Hey, everybody. Um, I'm Shailene. It's so good to see you. Uh, so we're, yes, we're doing a daffodil painting today. Here is the uh, painting we'll kind of be working from. Hopefully you can kind of see those colors. Um, so what we'll do is first we're going to sketch together in real time. You might have already gotten the sketch um, either through email or um, on the Michael's description page. So if you've sketched it out ahead of time, that's awesome. If you haven't, that's fine. I'm going to sketch it out and so you can just follow along with me. And let's see here, if we can switch to overhead view, I'll talk supplies and then we can get to painting. All right, let me <laughs> get my angle right here. All right, so let's see here. So supplies, let's talk real quick. So I'm using Cotman Round brushes um, from Windsor & Newton. You can see this one has gotten a lot of use. It's all worn in. But these are, yeah, size three and size six round. I'm using a mixing palette over here to my right. The colors I'm using today, I'm using cadmium red, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, a little bit of ultramarine blue, and I'm using sap green, which I forgot to grab a tube of green, but that right there, sap green, that's going to be the color of our leaves for the most part. So I'm going to put this aside for the moment. Um, and I'm using the paper I'm using here today is this is Windsor Newton's 9 by 12 cold press paper. Uh, the pencil I typically use to sketch is an F pencil. And these are really great because I'm able to erase super well after my painting is dried. But for the sake of you being able to see really well, I'm just using a regular click pencil today. So just your basic <laughs> number two pencil. So let's see here. I'm gonna sketch this out. It's not gonna look exactly like my sketch because I'm not that accurate, but I'm gonna try my best here. Um, before, before I draw, I'm just gonna take note of a couple of things. You'll notice that there's three flowers here and there's three stems down at the bottom. So each one of the flowers kind of is connecting to its own stem. So what I'm going to do is just kind of loosely get the placement of my flowers. If you've already sketched ahead of time, I would encourage you to just grab a piece of paper and practice your sketching. It's a great skill to have. We have kind of a smaller one up here. This is how I kind of like to place it out before I start painting. Just loosely get my positioning right. Makes a big difference, especially when I'm freehand sketching. Okay, so once you have those right, uh, let's start by just, I'm gonna do the center stem, just kind of get a line there. I'll do this stem that's over here, uh, this right flower. Notice the right flower stem is coming over to the left. <laughs> okay. So just loosely get that shape. Let's do this flower over here. So for this left flower, the stem is going over to the right side. So I'm gonna start by getting my sketch for the flowers just right. I'm gonna get this real close for you to see. So I'm gonna start with, I'll start with this center flower. So I'm not sure what this part of the flower is called, but I just keep calling it the bell, like the flower bell. So I'm gonna start with that kind of ruffly shape, kind of a circular, circular shape there. We got a little line, and then we have these little, little stamen pollen pods there. And I'm going to draw three petals here. I'm 
So I'm going to draw three petals kind of equally spaced out and then draw three petals behind those pebbles. So hopefully you can see that really, I'm definitely drawing kind of lightly. I, it's a habit I have. I don't like to draw my lines super dark. Um, well, you are getting a little bit of feedback about that, Shailene, because um, I did say that the purpose of doing it a little darker is for the camera that is better, but then we have to do some erasers. So if we just occasionally bring it close to the mm -hmm. camera before we start. Definitely. Painting. Yeah, sure that's will. why she, you recommend that F pencil because it's, mm -hmm. it is very faint, but then you don't have the, the marking. So yeah, everything. that's exactly okay. it. Yeah. So if you're, if you're at home, draw as light as you can, you don't need it to be super dark. You'll still be able to see it, but Let's see here. Okay, so I'm just kind of erasing some of those extra lines behind there. So there's my flower. So notice how there's six petals. We kind of have this bell shape here in the center. Ooh, feels like it's a little blurry, but <laughs> okay, I'm gonna keep moving. I'm gonna do this flower right here. So this one's more of a side view of this flower. So start with the center, kind of this, this bell shape. And then we got some kind of ruffles to so do that kind of ruffly oval shape right at the top of that bell. And then we have kind of this U shape and then some little stamen, okay? And then for this one, I'm only, I only see five petals here. There's one more, but it's behind it, so we can't see it. <laughs> so go ahead and draw five petals. You'll notice that my petals over here have a little bit of fold to them. So just draw two lines kind of parallel to create that fold. And then I have two more petals back here. Daffodil petals, you'll notice too, they're not super um, pointy. They're like, they kind of come to a point, but they're not super pointed. So you can maybe make a couple of them a little more pointed than others. It's gonna look great. All right, so last flower here. Pull the reference here. Okay, so starting again with that kind of round ruffled shape. I have this U shape and then a few little stamens, the underneath bell shape. And then this one is going to have six petals, okay? So I like to start with the front one. And I'm just gonna work my way around here. And then one more over here. All right, so let me hold that up just in case you need that. All right, so now we're gonna do the leaves. This part you, doesn't need to be perfect. <laughs> the flowers are the character of this painting and I feel like the leaves are just kind of complementing it. So let's go ahead and start with, I'm gonna do this petal over here that, or this stem for the furthest um, right, <laughs> right flower. I have a really hard time with right and left. So sometimes I need to figure it out real quick. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just Trace a stem shape. Try and keep these lines super even. And then I have a leaf, this big leaf, this long leaf is connected to this one. So let's go ahead and just draw a line that goes up. And you'll notice that I made this leaf just turn ever so slightly. And then it turns again. So it kind of, it's like almost like a figure eight shape. See that? I'm just gonna fix that a little bit. Okay, then I have one more leaf right here. So this one hooks downward or curves downward, but I kind of use like a little hook shape to kind of get that impression. So you just draw two lines that are both hooking down like candy canes right next to each other. And then that's how you create that little leaf shape. 
All right, I'm gonna keep moving. If it helps you to pull up that reference, just so you can have it, you know, a little closer to your vision than this one, you are welcome to do that. Just whatever helps you. All right, so I'm working on the center stem. This one only has one leaf coming off of it and it's going behind our top flower. So let's see. And I can definitely see a lot of differences between my sketch and this one, but it's still gonna turn out great. So if you're feeling like yours maybe looks a little different than this reference, don't even worry about it. Promise it'll still look great. <laughs> I have a couple of leaves up here at the top. So let's do that hook shape again. So one hook down, go up, do that again. And we have a leaf that's curling forward. Yeah, and then I'll do one more leaf up at the top. So these are uh, daffodil leaves are super long and thin. We don't have what kind of a round shape like most leaves. So working on the stem over here. One leaf off to the right side. And then I have two more leaves to draw. So I'm gonna draw this one right here. So it's hooking down and then this one leaf that's coming up behind that um, daffodil. All right. And then what I'd like to do right now is just Grab a little eraser, whatever eraser you have on hand. I actually might just use the quick pencil because it has a nice edge. <laughs> and I'm just gonna erase those little faint lines I, um, I drew at the beginning to just get my placement right. So I'll erase all those lines, keep it clean. I don't like to see a bunch of extra pencil markings that don't need to be there. Something I like to do some, sometimes, like if I'm sketching, instead of using my hand, I'll use like a, a paintbrush to just move those eraser markings. That way my hand doesn't rub the, um, you know, the pencil markings and make it all, make it all blurry. Okay, so I'm ready to paint. I hope you are too. <laughs> Um, but take, take some time here if you need to, just make sure you get your sketch just right. You can always catch up later. So let's get some color mixed. So let me pull this up just a bit so you can see everything I'm working with. So I'm going to use yellow ochre for my daffodils, okay? So if you have a lighter yellow you want to use, you might want to do that. You can use cadmium yellow, Indian yellow, aureal and yellow, any other yellows you want to. I'm going to be using a yellow that's going to lead to a pretty desaturated yellow. <laughs> it's a pretty, uh, it's like a really warm yellow. So if you want to use a brighter yellow, you are welcome to, but I'm going to use yellow ochre. So to get started, I will, and hopefully you can see my palette. It's hard for me to tell Let's see. All right, so I'm gonna get yellow ochre mixed over here. Just get a little puddle going on your palette. And I'm using my size six brush, okay? So using the size six brush, yellow ochre, go ahead and paint. Let's start by painting the center flower. I'm gonna go ahead and just cover all of it with that color. Hey Felicia, would you mind double checking to see if there's 
um, anybody who's not muted. I'm hearing like a clicking sound. I sure will. Thank you. That seemed to fix it. Thank you. Um, so I'm doing a pretty even layer here. I don't want it to be too light. I definitely want it to be a strong yellow. So it's a good amount of pigment, but also a good amount of water. So it flows really nicely. If your paint isn't flowing easily, you have too much paint in your brush. So just grab a little bit more water. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing over here, but I'm going to avoid the center bell. I'm just gonna paint the petals. I think I'm still hearing some background sounds. I can hear as well. Um, if anyone uh, mic is open, can you please mute your mic? <laughs> that wasn't me. Okay, so let's see here. I'm gonna do the same color on this furthest daffodil. All right. So using that same color, I'm actually going to just deepen the color just right around the edges here. Yeah, I'm definitely still hearing some sounds. If you guys wouldn't mind, can you just double check that you are muted? Because we're hearing some background sounds. Okay, so now I'm going to, let's see here, I'm gonna grab just some cadmium red, just pure cadmium red, and I'm going to paint this bell up here, but avoid the center stamen. So those little tiny little lines there, just keep those light for now. We'll come back later and we'll make those yellow. Okay, so now I'm going to paint the leaves. So this is, this is gonna be a pretty easy part. I'm just using sap green, just pure one color of green for now. I'll make it complicated later, but for right now I'm just gonna do just pure sap green. And I'm gonna do just, just an even layer of green on all of my leaves and stems. I'm using the size six round brush. If your brush looks like, let's see here. <laughs> if your brush looks more like this old brush I have, you might not wanna use that. You might wanna stick with a more pointy brush because these are pretty delicate lines and it's pretty, you know, they're pretty thin leaves and thin stems. So use, just use a brush with a really nice point to it so that you're able to get that those nice details, those nice crisp lines. Charlene, I'm just getting a couple of questions. I know you and I reviewed yeah. the colors. Um, the yellow ochre, we were suggesting you use other colors, but someone saying if they don't have cad red, what would you suggest that they use? I know we we're gonna be using some burnt sienna. Mm -hmm. um, you, you could use burnt sienna. Honestly, it might look a little bit more brown. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't necessarily use alizarin crimson, but if, if that's all you have, Use alizarin crimson with a little bit of yellow and you'll get a color that's pretty similar to, yeah. Um, yeah. To warm it up, yeah, because alizarin yeah. is a cooler color, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay, so 
This part is a little bit of a slow process. I think it's very, uh, for me, it's very calming, kind of more therapeutic. Just, <laughs> and that's kind of like working on a coloring book. So just try and keep your color really even. You want a good amount of color and a good amount of water so that it flows really evenly. Sap green is definitely my favorite green for leaves just in general. I also like to use olive green and perylene green, but I go through sap green so fast. <laughs> it's just such a nice warm green color. Hi, Shaleen. We know that the sap green is one of your faves and it's in the um, a lot of the palettes that we're using for many of your classes. But if someone mm -hmm. were to mix it, what would you suggest? What two colors would you suggest mixing to create a sap green? That's a good question. I would maybe go for cadmium yellow with Windsor blue, but that might be something you want to just experiment with. Um, it's kind of a warmer, it's really a warm green. So you can maybe even use yellow ochre and blue. And I was see just going to suggest the yellow ochre yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah a yellow ochre. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's and, and cadmium, nicely. cadmium yellow is quite warm as well. Um, and I love that color for yellow. I also like to use lemon yellow, which is in the uh, Cotman Pocket Palette set. That's, but that's a cooler yellow, lemon yellow. So it's just, you get a lot of different greens, but if you mix a variety of blue, blues and yellows that you have, you'll get a lot of different green colors. So, okay, so doing good. Are we good, good on time? <laughs> I always have to try and time these well so that it's exactly an hour. Okay, so I'm going to move over to my white petals here. So this is a fun part and it takes a little bit of, um, takes some intention, I'll, I'll say that. So I'm gonna use ultramarine blue, use whatever blue you have, it doesn't matter. Use a little bit of blue and then grab a little bit of burnt sienna. If you don't have burnt sienna, just mix the three primary colors, but mainly use blue. And that's gonna be our mixture, <laughs> so very easy. Just Primary colors, but make it a little bit heavier on the blue. And get a little puddle going over here on your palette. Very watery. We basically just want the kind of color of murky water. <laughs> a lot of times this is the color that's in my dirty paint jars. <laughs> but get that color going on your palette. And then what I'm going to do now, I'm still using my size six brush, just rolling that brush in that mixture. Very watery. This is like the faintest color ever, you guys. Very, very light. And then I'm gonna just brush it on those petals. And I'm not even going back to my palette. I'm just gonna keep using that same. I just lift it from one petal and bring it to the next. Keeping it super light. I'm just going to repeat what I wrote in the chat to create this very light pale, um, like it appears white. It's, it's actually a very diluted gray, lovely. Um, it's a mixture of an ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, and it's watered down a lot. There's a lot of it to dilute it to create this very faint, faint, faint gray. Okay, so I'm going to actually, I'm going to switch brushes. I'm going to switch over to my size three. And I'm going to start bringing out some of the details of our flowers. And this is, this is the fun part. I think it's the fun part. So I'm gonna do a mixture that feels about like 
I'm going to do like half and half. So burnt sienna and cadmium red. And that's going to create just like a really rusty, beautiful red, beautiful red tone. Orangey red tone. And I'm just getting a good amount of mixture here on my palette. I always like to mix it here first and then bring it to the paper. Get it just right over here. Okay, so then once you have that, I'm gonna go ahead and start with my center flower because why not? And I'm gonna start by just dropping some color behind this bell on this back petal. Drop some color, and then I'm gonna switch over to my size six round brush. It's clean. It just has a tiny bit of water on it. Tiny bit of water, so it's a damp, clean brush. I'm gonna use that brush to smooth that color up and out towards the ends of the petals. And look at that, that already looks, it already gives it so much more dimension, doesn't it? And I'm going to just keep doing that technique around on each of these petals. And I'm trying to be careful to maintain kind of that ruffled shape of that petal. So I'm not gonna make it like a circle. I'm just trying to keep that kind of jagged edge. Using my damp size six round brush, I'm just gonna pull that color out. Feather it out the tiniest bit. Keep on moving. And I like to do one petal and then use my other brush to smooth the color. I find that if I, um, if I were to paint around the whole flower and then try and do this technique, um, it would, the, the paint would dry a lot and it's just harder to move when it's not wet. So you don't want to let it dry too much. Shailene, if, if, Shailene, if you wouldn't mind um, when you get through with these petals to hold it up to the camera again. Um, Definitely. That really does help. Definitely. I wonder too if I could just, is that helpful if I just have it a little bit closer? Yes, that is okay. very, yeah, I think I, been, okay. <laughs> yeah, that actually, I think would be preferred for, from, okay, the, great. because um, I have put all the colors in, I'll continue to do that and we're getting, yes, much better. Great. Views. Then I'll just, and I'll just tell you what colors I'm grabbing in case you can't see it. All right. And I'm going to do that same technique in the center. Um, so what I'm going to do is just avoid those um, stamen, keep those light yellow. So notice how I'm just painting around them, okay? Just paint, dropping color around the edges, draw some little lines reaching up. And I'm going to drop some paint just underneath that little ruffled part. See how I did that? You can notice over here, you can see that, how that technique looks. And it's all finished. And I'm using my damp round size six brush and then just really gently using that tip to smooth the color. The less water you have in your bristles, the more control you're going to have. If you bring this brush over with a ton of water, it's just going to muddy it all and kind of make the color go everywhere. So just use, just make sure it's just damp. So you just blot it on your paper towel. And then you can do that technique to kind of smooth the color out. So that's feeling good, a good place to stop right now. In order to get it to this depth of color, I will come back and do another layer in a few minutes. <laughs> so back over here, just making sure I still have a good amount of paint on my palette. This is cadmium red and burnt sienna. And I'm going to do the same technique for these petals over here. And I just love this part, it's so much fun. So you just drop some lines, then switch brushes and smooth it out. If you would rather use a brush that's a similar size, you might find that to be helpful 
you maybe want, want to use a three and a four instead of a three and a six. Um, just experiment, see what feels right. Sometimes as I'm working, I mean, you can probably imagine, I'm sure you're the same way, but as I'm working, I usually am just switching between multiple brushes. I'm like, oh, not the right one. Let's use this, let's try this. But for the sake of the class, because I said I was gonna use these two, I'm, I'm gonna try my best to just <laughs> stick to the size three and six, but I'm eyeing my brushes over here. <laughs> All right, so dropping some color here on the outer end of the petal and closer to the base of that bell shaped thing. If anybody knows what this is called, you should let me know. I know that these are called stamen, the very center, but I'm not sure what the bell part of daffodils are called. So if there's any botanists out there, you should, you should let us know. We're getting trumpet maybe. <laughs> Okay. That seems to be the, I was just going to Google it, but that seems that everyone's chiming in. Yes, trumpet. Trumpet. Oh, okay. Hey, Bell yeah. wasn't too far off, right? No, but you're right. <laughs> See, Bell, you learned trumpet. something too. Look at that. I did. That's great. Okay, so that's the trumpet. I love that. It's funny because before this class, I asked my husband to Google it for me. <laughs> I was like, Dan, what is that called? Like that part of the daffodil? And he's like, I'm not seeing anything. So wow, we're getting really elaborate descriptions. Thank you, Janet. This is amazing. It says that there, if everyone reads in the chat, she tells us all about all the pieces of the. Um... Oh, that's so cool. Yes. Lots of learnings. Thanks for sharing. Always, always good to learn something new. Definitely. You paint and we uh, give you a little bit of uh, botanical education <laughs> as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, I'm doing the same technique I did for the center of that trumpet. Uh, and I'm just doing this, this is burnt sienna, cadmium red, and I'm avoiding those stamen, the center. I'm gonna keep those light. Just drawing some little faint lines. We wanna kind of create that ruffled shape. So we just do that by um, having a contrast of light red and dark red, creating these little lines. And let me hold that up for you even more. Hold it in the sun there. And I'm going to do the same thing underneath here. I'm going to try and create kind of a more rounded shape. So I'm just gonna drop darker, this darker red mixture. This is, as I mentioned, cad red, cadmium red and burnt sienna. So it's quite a dark mixture. And then I'm going to just smooth that out just a bit. There you go. So we'll come back to that later. It doesn't feel detailed enough for me yet. So I like to let things dry and then come back and slowly add more and more detail. Um, but I'm going to, oh yeah, let's do this center piece over here too. So I have burnt sienna. Cadmium red, so the same mixture for all three of these flowers, at least for the trumpet part. Okay, so some dark color in the center, avoiding the stamen. Makes a big difference to avoid those little center spots, I think. So I'm just drawing some lines that are reaching up out towards the edges, giving it that ruffled kind of texture. All right, and then I'm gonna drop a little bit of paint just underneath that ruffled edge. And switching brushes. So my damp size six round, I just dumped it in water, dunked it in water, and then blotted it on my paper towel. And as I, as I do this, as I lift color, I often will just come over to my paper towel and blot some of that orange off. Because as I am doing this, I'm getting paint in my bristles and I don't want paint in my bristles. I want this to stay clean for, the, the, for what I'm using it for. I need it to stay clean because I'm just smoothing it out. I'm not trying to 
paint right now, I'm just smoothing. All right, now let's go back to our leaves. It's time to add some details. And real quick, why don't I just mention these so that I can move them out of frame. <laughs> so if you care to share your painting later, um, we would ask that you please tag us. So you can tag me, you can tag Michaels, Windsor and Newton, and you can use either of these hashtags, make it with Michaels or Michaels classes. And if you would like to be in the loop about classes that I'm specifically teaching, um, you can either follow me on Instagram at, at Louise or get on my newsletter, my artist newsletter, and I will keep you in the loop. But I'm going to move those so I'm not worried about them <laughs> being in frame. Okay, so let's go to our leaves. So I'm going to do a little bit more of a fancy mixture here, just a little bit. I'm going to do burnt sienna or yeah well i will use burnt sienna sap green a little bit of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna so i'm using three colors here mainly sap green i want this to be a green color but i'm trying to desaturate it and darken it so adding blue and burnt sienna is going to make it pretty dark I'm kind of more of like a foresty green color and you are able to see what I'm doing, right? Yeah. Okay, so when you feel good with that mixture, it looks like a good color to you. Let's start up at the top. What I'm going to do is just drop some color here and it's going to create kind of a, a shadow. So we just have a little more, a little more dimension here. Then you can use your other brush, your clean brush and smooth it out. And anywhere where there's a stem that's coming right up to one of the flowers, let's just darken it right there so that it kind of creates that impression that there's some shadow. So it's burnt sienna, sap green, and ultramarine blue. If you don't have those exact colors, just maybe try mixing. You can try mixing all of the primary colors, but make sure it's heavy, heavy, heavy on. Um, well, I guess you, in that case, you want to make it heavy on the yellow. Um, but I, I do want this to be a pretty, pretty strong color. So very, very green, very dark. So that just means you need to have a lot of pigment in it. So not too much water. Over here where this uh, leaf is, is uh, reaching behind this petal, it would make sense for there to be a little bit of shadow there. Maybe a little bit up here. And then smooth that color. And something you might notice is that as paint dries, as watercolor dries, it often dries a little lighter than it looked when you initially laid it down, as is the case up here. So I'm just going to drop a little bit more green, a little bit more here. I want to do some really strong contrasts because I want some really dark green, some really light green. That's what's going to give your, your painting a lot of interest in life and dimension is having the strong contrasts, the strong light, uh, <laughs> the strong dark colors and very light colors. All right, I'm going to come over here to this left flower and drop some color just behind the petals, that leaf. And where, you're, where all of, there's like a big intersection, a big old junction of stems and leaves here. So I want you to just look at it and 
any stems or leaves that are in the background, just make those a little darker. And any uh, stems or leaves that are in the foreground, <laughs> um, we'll keep those lighter. So see what I'm doing here? Just darkening this one in the background. We'll do the same thing here. There's this big leaf that's overlapping this stem. So I'm just gonna drop a little bit of um, darker green just behind it. And see how that's just giving it dimension. It just pushed that stem into the background and it kind of pushed the uh, this stem and leaf forward just a little bit. Pretty cool trick, huh? Okay, so this little leaf right here, we need to do the under, underside of it. Let's put that in shadow just a bit. So drop some dark color there. And I'm gonna use my clean damp brush to gently smooth that color out. For this flower or this uh, leaf right here, I'm gonna make the inside of it a little bit darker. And that really gives the nice impression that, that there's some turn to that leaf, doesn't it? And as I mentioned, the smaller brush you the smaller brush you have on hand, use that. The brush with the nicest point too. This is some pretty fine detail work, and you got to use the right tool for that. So, small brush with a nice point. If your bristles are all splayed you might have a harder time getting that, those crisp lines, okay? Um, I'm going to also, I'm gonna go along the outer edges of my stems, because I want my stems to look round. So I'm just gonna drop a little bit of green. I'm just gonna go ahead and go on, on the left side. Shailene, I have a question for you. I just wanted to, uh, a couple of questions. People are, would, when, you're, when you're done, people can just pause mm -hmm. for a second and hold the artwork closer to the camera. But the leaves Absolutely. are predominantly sap green. But when you went into the darker um, mm -hmm. spots, I believe that you used sap green, ultramarine blue, and burnt sienna. That's it. Okay. I put that in the Those chat for everyone. Very good. Yeah. All right, so, and if you don't have those colors, you could honestly just use a darker version of sap green to kind of get that darker effect. You can use one color. It doesn't, you don't have to use three. I just like to, to be fancy, I guess. <laughs> I, I like to get some really desaturated colors. It's just fun to use a mixture. Um, so notice what I did here. I'm just dropping some darker color on the outer left side. And then I use my damp clean brush to just gently feather that color, smooth it. It kind of helps to create kind of a, um, more of like a round cylindrical shape. The leaves are more flat and the stems are round. So that's a subtle way we can kind of get that impression. All right, so let me, just eyeball this real quick and see if I want to add any more depth. I think I want to try and finish up my leaves right now. Drop just a little bit more dark color on this leaf. One of my favorite things to do at the end is just drop a little bit more of that dark green, uh, dark green just underneath the stems. Just a tiny bit more. And 
you really have to build dark color with watercolor. It's not a super dark paint, and so you really have to work up to it. So you'll notice that in some of these dark, dark spots, I've probably layered three or four layers of, of my dark mixture to get that really strong depth of color. All right. So now I'm going to go back to my flowers. So let's see here, what can I do first? I'll go ahead and start with this white, uh, the, the daffodil with the white petals. So let's go back to our, our puddle. So there's uh, ultra, uh, what was this, ultramarine? Yeah, ultramarine blue with a little bit of burnt sienna. Do you want it to be heavier on the blue side? And I'm using my smaller brush with the finer point. So what I'm gonna do now is just kind of looking over at my reference, um, the one I painted yesterday. I'm just gonna draw some lines here. And right away, I'll use my damp clean brush to feather those lines out just a tiny bit. So I'm kind of just doing some lines closer to the trumpet base and just on the tips of these um, flower petals. Very, very, very light color here. Still very, very light color. Very, very watery. We want mostly the paper to be shining through to be giving us the white because the white of the paper is the white of our flower. So. Yeah, we don't want to go too nuts with the anything we layer on it. And if you bring too much paint, just grab a paper towel and just blot it. And you should be able to lift that color out. So going back and forth between my size three to drop paint and my size six to smooth all of those little paint lines. So just notice how we're just kind of starting to slowly build some form, build some dimension. That up for you. I'll come back to that one in a minute, but I'm gonna move back to the center. So I'm going to do burnt sienna with some cadmium red, about 50-50. And this mixture, let's make it super, super strong. So very heavy on the paint. Whereas with the white, the blue mixture, we kept that um, super, super watery. This one, I want it to be very strong, okay? And then using my size three brush, I'm going to go right along the edge of this trumpet. Drop a little bit right underneath where it ruffles there. Let's go along the back petals. And then using your other clean, damp brush, you smooth out those lines. Maybe you want to drop a little bit of that same mixture to the very tips of uh, your petals. You can bring that orange just out just a bit more. 
I like to kind of have some, some kind of like line shapes in my petals. I don't want the petals to look super flat. So just having these very, very faint lines gives, I feel like it just gives your, it'll give your flower a more realistic texture. So I grabbed just a little bit of that color and then I dotted it just at the very end of the petals. Draw those lines and I'm gonna drop some more color right back in here. Remember we wanna Make sure to keep that ruffled kind of texture. So you can draw these tiny little lines. And I'll, I'll hold that up for you in just one sec. I know that's pretty, pretty small details there. Seems like the closer I get it, the more I kind of lose the color of it, but Hopefully that's helpful for you to see those details. All right, so this center, the center flower here is feeling good to me. I'll let it all dry and then sometimes I'll, once it's all dry, then I'll know if I wanna add even more um, darker contrasts, but for now that's looking good. So I'm gonna go over to this last petal. So burnt sienna, cadmium red. And I'll start by just working on these little ruffled parts. I wanna add just a little bit more contrast, a little bit more dark shadows in there. And same technique that I did on the other, other flower petals. I'm just adding a bit of that darker mixture just kind of at the base of that trumpet and some lines over here. Create a bit of shadow back here. Shirley, we're making really good time. Um, just want to just encourage everyone that work at your own pace. The class is being recorded. We have many different um, types of artists that are joining us today and looks like we're going to be wrapping up shortly and we'll share our creations on screen. But the, the class is being recorded and it'll be available within 48 hours at michaels.com backslash classes. It's where you went to register for the class and it'll come up under recent classes. And then it'll live there, go forward. Um, it'll, you could also go to the Michael's YouTube channel. But um, great feedback from lots of you today. Thank you for, for, for jumping in on the chat. Um, I think that this is coming together lovely. I see so many great responses. Thank you for all the favorable feedback for Sh Shailene. Um, we will be, as I put in the post or uh, in the chat, we have a tulip class that's coming up in April. And I put that link in so you could book that class. So we have Shailene with us for um, a couple more months. And then, uh, the, I don't know, we're gonna just keep it going. And um, we're gonna try different uh, time slots and continue with these beautiful botanicals. So thank you all for joining. And at the end, if you'd like to place, um, you'll get an email with a survey and we would love to hear your feedback from, uh, from, uh, from you. Um, so that'll help go forward, but uh, Great feedback, appreciate all of your um, feedback. It looks fantastic and we wanna have enough time so we could share with everybody. So how are, how are you feeling, Shailene? I'm good. Um, and Jeannie is very tactful, but the reason we're gonna do classes for a couple of months is I'm actually gonna have a baby in June. <laughs> So I, didn't wanna, I wanted you to say it. <laughs> we'll take a little break for a while and then hopefully back here in the fall. 
Right. But, um, you know, we're going to miss you, but we'll do other things <laughs> to keep everyone happy. And you're going to. Hey, I got like eight classes, right? I think I've done. I don't we know have quite classes. a bit. <laughs> and for those of you, you, we could go back. If you've just joined us, we have plenty of classes you can go back to and keep yourself busy while she's tending to her newborn baby. So we're really excited about that. But uh, yeah, this is a, it's a wonder, these classes have been wonderful and the feedback and your disposition and obviously everyone's been very responsive. And we wanna thank Michaels for offering this great idea. And just as you, if you've noticed, we continue with a very similar palette. So watercolors last mm -hmm. for a very long time, but we've been very mindful about that. And uh, the botanicals are, are getting just rave reviews. So thank you for that. Awesome. Um, and before I, before I head off, I want to do two things. I want to, I want to look, I want everybody to hold up their paintings for me in just a minute. And I'm also going to show you the tulip class that we're going to be doing beginning of April. Is that when it is, Jeannie? I think it's April 6th. It's April 6th. Cool. And the booking is available right now. If you go to michaels.com up in the top corner where the classes are, you can register. All right, so just little details here. Okay, so once this is totally dried, then I would actually come back with my eraser and try my best to erase any pencil markings that I see, but I'm not gonna have time for it to totally dry before the end of this class. So this was a good, this is a good example of a, a <laughs> this painting, but you know, all the eraser markings are gone. So there you have it. That was a really fun one. So let me show you the tulip we're going to be working on. Uh, this tulip here is going to be so on the sixth, and it's going to be kind of focused around color mixing because we're going to use a really limited palette, but we're going to try our best to get um, purple. <laughs> so that's going to be a fun one. It'll be just a good uh, a good class when it comes to color mixing. So I'm going to switch to let's see here the grid view because I want to see. How do I work Zoom? Let's see. <laughs> yeah, we're going to go to the uh, gallery view and we want everyone to hold up your artwork. So oh, okay. gallery view. Okay, there it is. Okay, yeah, I would love for everybody to hold it up so I can, can see your paintings. Wow. Let's see what we have. How do I switch around here? Oh my goodness, these look amazing. Keep holding them up because I have to go through a few pages here. That's right. Amazing. These look absolutely beautiful. Oops. Wow. Thank you guys so much. So cool to see these. Yeah, nicely done. Lots of them. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. It's just such an honor to be able to teach these classes and get to share some time with you. So we'll see you hopefully back here uh, the 6th. Be sure to get signed up for that. And you guys have beautiful days and I'll see you next time, okay? Thanks everyone, stay well. <laughs>